people. Do a little ticker moving. We're up to 12, we're up to 14. Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to what is very evidently, as you can see on the screen, our first MCAT webinar at Sketchy. Would love to see those of you joining uh, to say a hello in the chat. I will say if your um, if your chat window says two hosts and panelists, switch it to to everyone so everyone can can see what you're saying. That's always just a couple clicks whenever you use the Zoom webinar platform. Maybe some people watching us on YouTube as well. Say hi there as well. Uh, we're doing a little dual live stream action and we're going to give it a few minutes for people to trickle in. But yeah, hello, everyone. So great to see you. We are going to allow for just a hot minute for people to filter in before we get into it. But man, we've got a just like the, the, this, this session, it's going to be like a fuse. You know, we got like a, we got a bomb over here. Can you say that on the internet? I don't know. Yeah, it's not um, an airport. You're okay. The, we have an explosive the we're going for. <laughs> we have an explosive device over here. We got a match over here and it's just going to burn down. It's going to be real cool. Although I guess it's actually water themed. Probably should have planned this intro a little bit better. We gotta think, we gotta think of our metaphors in advance next time. <laughs> uh they don't hire me for the metaphors i suppose say uh say what's up in the chat if you can change your to to everyone from hosts and panelists if you send it to hosts and panelists we will publicly shame you yes we will say uh well it's funny because so far i think everyone has sent it to everyone um but we will say if your name was robert robert please change your name to host and panelists. <laughs> Michael, please. <laughs> I, I wish I was screen sharing my screen. Oh man, Michael. <laughs> M Michael's, Michael's in on the game here. That's my guy right there. He already said hello to everyone too. He just he's he really said hello to everyone. He switched it to host and attendees. And then he said, please say my name. Michael, Michael has to change his name to pain is pleasure. All right, that's the rule. <laughs> Uh, all right. Hey, so three minutes in, I have a feeling we will have more people uh, joining us as we go. We've got people here in our Zoom room. We've got people uh, on YouTube. Uh, if you want to have a little bit quicker back and forth with us, uh, join via Zoom. There should actually be a sign-in link in the YouTube doobly-doo. Uh, is that what they still call it or am, I, or am I a generation behind? I don't know, but they used to call it that. More than one, I think. And Welcome to our very first MCAT webinar, uh, where we are going to take a little bit of sketchy MCAT, and we're just bringing it all to you live on the internet, if all you do is sign up and show up. Uh, what we are going to do this evening, or if you are in California this late afternoon, <laughs> is we're all going to say hi uh, and introduce who we are. We're going to talk a tiny bit about what's sketchy. And what sketchy MCAT is, but then the meat of it is going to be an actual for real from behind the paywall sketchy MCAT lesson uh, about glycolysis, everyone's favorite topic, or at least today it's going to be everyone's favorite topic. Uh, then we're going to have some time for Q&A and please stick around because if you are here, then we are going to be giving away a free sketchy MCAT course today to somebody who is here in the room with us. Uh, and there's going to be a brief survey because we actually a couple brief surveys, I guess, one in the Zoom room, one that we'll give you a link to, it's fine, uh, where we want to get your feedback because we're going to keep doing these. Uh, and we want these to be something we can, can kind of come back to and hang out for and tell your friends about. So we want these to be as great as possible and we want to get your feedback. We're going to run our introductions first. There is an arms race between the content and creative teams over who can have cooler photos for their intro and we know who's winning. Um, Jess, I will let you start though. Yeah, so clearly I'm not on the creative team. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Jess. I am the director of our undergraduate education at Sketchy. Um, so that includes the MCAT pro Sketchy MCAT program. I have a PhD in neuroscience uh, because I fell in love with the brain when I was a pre-med student. All right, and, uh, we're on to Ricky. Yeah, I am Ricky. I'm an associate creative director here. 
Uh, I have voiced some of the sketchy videos, just enough to give me pre-nodules on my vocal cords. And I won exactly one sketchy ween costume contest and it only took six hours of face paint. That is uh, epic though. That, that nodule thing's actually a true story. What, what was your Halloween costume, Nikki? That was Zachy Zebracorn from one of the, the psych ones. And guys, I, I, I had to work the whole day like this because I had to do this at like three in the morning. So I was in a bunch of meetings looking like that. It was a pretty good day. That was a hilarious day. Uh, hey guys, I'm Ben. I'm the creative director here. Uh, I also took the MCAT and went to med school and then I uh, matched in theology and then realized I didn't want to be a doctor <laughs> a little late in the game. Um, so uh, yeah, that's me. And I've gotten a lot of shit lately. Am I, is this... This is rated TVMA, right? I can, <laughs> can say light swear words. Uh, I have gotten a lot of flack lately for uh, not getting a haircut. So I promise to do that before next time. All right. This is a public commitment that is on the internet, Ben. You can't take it back. Uh, I am Adam Gray. I'm the head of Med and Pre-Med Education at Sketchy. Uh, I've spent a lot of my life with the MCAT and in test prep of all shapes and sizes and forms, but more recently have been having a lot of fun here at Sketchy, but today I am mostly just your host for all of the uh, fun and interesting things that are going to be shared by everyone else here. Uh, but speaking of Sketchy, I want to see uh, in the chat, I got a small, small poll that is just like type it in the chat for me uh, or in the chat on YouTube as well. If you know what Sketchy is, you're here and you're like, oh yeah, I know everything about Sketchy. I'm just here for the event. Give me a one in the chat. If you're a sketchy master. If you don't know much about sketchy and you might just heard this from a friend or kind of like caught it on Instagram or you kind of heard of us, but you want to check it out more, give me a two in the chat. So if you know sketchy, give me a one. Don't know sketchy so well, give me a two. Always like to see the little split. This is going to be a, this, the next minute or so is going to be a little more useful for those who are twos uh, than ones, but the rest of it's going to be a good, a lot of fun for everyone. Uh, sketchy is all about visual learning but it's more than just visuals. It's also characters, it's stories, it's fun things, it's worlds. Uh, tons of students use us. It's how med school works nowadays, especially for classes like microbiology and pharmacology. And it's how it works for MCAT now too. Um, you might wonder, well, why does Sketchy work for me? They tell us we should, uh, when we're on the internet, we should tell people, you know, if you're the kind of person, you know, this is for you. And yeah, you wanna remember stuff quickly, know it forever and actually have fun. Uh, Hi, we're sketchy. You're you. We're going to get along well. Uh, like I said, MCAT is a newer uh, thing for sketchy. Uh, and I want to give Jess a chance to talk about how we are working in the world MCAT. Yeah, so here are a few more details about sketchy MCAT. Um, so it's crafted by our same awesome creative team. So we have Ben and Ricky here, uh, as well as leading MCAT and science experts. So think really cool professors. Uh, so currently we have 235 lessons. Uh, we add more each month, so stay tuned for sure. Uh, we prioritize all the highest yield and really difficult to memorize material. And the coolest part, we definitely price it, uh, knowing that you'll use several resources in your prep uh, to take the MCAT. And then even better, you're going to have a lot of fun along the way. Uh, and uh, Jess, tell us how this lesson we're about to dive into for the meat of this presentation, how does this fit into the MCAT course as a whole? Yeah, so our content spans across uh, eight different courses, and each one has a unique theme. So today we're actually going to focus on a biochemistry topic uh, in our carbohydrates unit. So two-part glycolysis. Uh, it takes place in sketchy land, so very sketchy theme park. So it's ah. so sketchy. <laughs> Every <laughs> yeah, really. genuinely dangerous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, if anybody has, uh, if anybody here is already uh, a sketchy student or has a free or has experienced a free trial and looked at any of these, I don't think we get through any one lesson without someone getting hurt on a ride in sketchy land. Uh, however, that's why they're all cartoons, right? That's what we learned from Roger Rabbit. They can all bounce back. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so we're going to dive into the meat of this. Uh, talk about something that's happening in your body right now. Uh, that being glycolysis and our lesson on glycolysis, uh, which as you might've learned it in the past, 
looks a little bit like this. Uh, but a lot of this, I'm just going to pitch over to Ricky, who not only is the voiceover uh, and is here with us uh, for, for the lesson itself on the site and is here with us today, but was actually the main architect of this lesson when we made it originally. Uh, so Ricky, talk about how you approach the creation of this and how we transform what you see here into you know, something a little more fun. Yeah, I mean, so one, one of the main things on this one was just like trying to figure out how to space this because glycolysis is a pretty long pathway. Um, so we chose kind of doing this like U shape uh, so that we have everything on the investment phase on the top and everything on the payoff phase on the bottom. Um, and then that is reflected in the sketch as well. This sketch, as it turns out, and this sort of this layer over. Uh, it's almost like we designed it like that. <laughs> yeah, just a coincidence. That, well, no, I, I mean, but no, really just sketchy land. It's just a real theme park. And this happens to be the first ride when you get in. It just happened to be shaped like this, right? Uh, so uh, I think we're just going to dive right in and get started. Uh, when you get into this ride at sketchy land, uh, we start filling things in piece by piece. And we start with this island in the middle. What's going on there, Ricky? Yeah, so this is the overall reaction of glycolysis. Uh, so we have the glucose candy treasure chests off to the left there and some NAD plus bottles that are empty because they are not carrying electrons yet. Uh, and then we have some powered down ADP seagulls. So you can always kind of see the difference between the ADP seagulls. They're clearly inactivated and the active ones always have red glowing lights because they're gonna be up to no good. Uh, and then on the right side of the uh, aero shovel there, we have some pyruvate pirates because that's what you produce in glycolysis. And then NAD plus, um, oh, I'm sorry, NADH energy drinks. Now, the, now these are energized since they're carrying electrons. And then of course we have the activated seagulls. Uh, and then that guy off to the left is uh, dumping cytosol gel into the water. Not totally sure why, uh, but this happens in the cytosol of the cell, which is in contrast to the other um, two parts of aerobic respiration, which as you know, happen in the mitochondria. And he's wearing a gas mask because this does not require oxygen. This is an, an anaerobic process. So just a, a quick reminder and major overview on this first island. And that's and something we see across the, the a lot of- The seagulls smell terrible. So he's got to protect himself from the scent of- Ooh, Yeah, that's a very good, but even the animatronic ones. We try to make him as lifelike as possible, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So uh, we have the net equation in the center, but then around the edges we cover, as we saw in the figure at the start, the actual process, symbol by symbol, figure by figure. And especially for those of you who have not seen a ton of sketchy before, I think it'll be a real treat for you to see how we translate this into symbols. Uh, but yeah, Ricky, talk to us about the process itself, step by step. Yeah, so before I even get into step one, uh, just, I just want everyone to, to note that all of the pirates up on the top of the sketch have these long jackets and they all have six buttons because these are our six carbon molecules. And we actually have labeled the carbon. So you can see that, that these pirates actually have uh, six hooks to label carbon six, and they have little battery slots on their six arm to show that it's actually carbon six that gets phosphorylated. Um, so this is going to be in contrast to the pirates later that all have three buttons because those are three carbon molecules, but we'll get there later. So step one, uh, glucose is catalyzed by hexokinase into glucose 6-phosphate, uh, and it does that using one molecule of ATP. So this is why we were investing ATP to make this happen. Um, so uh, we have a worker who is taking a battery from a battery pack and putting it into uh, the six hook arm of glucose to make G6P. And just as, as another thing to keep in mind uh, in this sketch, everything that is an enzyme is a worker and everything that is an intermediate is like an animatronic pirate. So you can really see the difference between the intermediates and the enzymes. And then, oh, the, the last thing you need to know about this step is that uh, G6P is actually an inhibitor of hexokinase. So that's why this G6P pirate is going in and grabbing the, the kinase worker there. And totally that's why part of the ride. Go, go ahead, man. Totally part of the ride. The, the, the robots have not gained sentience yet. Don't worry. <laughs> that's part of the thrill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, what's our next step then after, after we start inhibiting uh, our first fellow? 
Okay, so step two involves an isomerase. So now we're taking a glucose 6-phosphate and we're just rearranging it so that it is fructose 6-phosphate. So now it's a five carbon ring instead of six. We still have six carbons here. So uh, you can see that there is a worker. She has an ice pack on her head for isomerase. And she's rearranging six wires to show that she's mixing up uh, the, the G6P molecule. And then that pirate on the right is standing by fruit to remind you of fructose 6-phosphate. And he still has the battery in his six-hook arm. He's also he's got a peg leg now, which I think might be foreshadowing, right? I think that might be foreshadowing. Wait, what's foreshadowing? I think it's when you get a peg leg. Yes. Foreshadowing for what? Ah, oh, what a good segue. <laughs> so smooth. <Yeah. laughs> so step three involves phosphofructokinase. Uh, so now we are getting another phosphate, uh, which is indeed going into the one peg leg of this pirate. So that's why that battery slot is open. You can see that is going into carbon number one. Uh, so PFK uses another ATP molecule. That's why this worker is taking... Uh, P battery out of the pack and putting it into the one peg leg of F6P. Uh, and then this step is highly, highly regulated. Uh, so the molecules that uh, activate PFK are AMP, ADP, and F26BP. So we've actually depicted all of the activators uh, back under the table. So we have uh, one battery AMP amp, like, and then a two P battery pack right next to it. And then there's just little two six fruit right under there. Uh, and then ATP and citrate are inhibitors of PFK. So we've got an ATP seagull dropping an orange, a citrus orange on this worker's head to show that those, those molecules actually inhibit this from happening. And we end up with uh, F16PP, which is that pirate on the right with now two phosphates. That's why all the workers at this part freaking hate those seagulls. They're, no, they're, they're terrible. I think, I think in the narration of the actual video, we call them flying buttholes. Technically accurate, if you think about it. Yeah, you, <laughs> anatomically accurate. Uh, okay, so now this is a step where we are breaking our six carbon molecule into two, three carbon molecules. Uh, so the enzyme that does this is aldolase and it breaks F16BP into G3P or glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and D, uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate or DHAP. So a DHAP is the scale on top there. And it says, don't handle apparatus, please, to remind you of DHAP. And it pretty much looks exactly like a DHAP molecule. Like we even have the, the OH there on the scale and the carbonyl carbon. Uh, and then the other molecule is G3P, of course. And that is the pirate that's uh, climbing on this uh, glacier for glacieraldehyde and, and all of the ones with glyceraldehyde in their name are on a glacier. Um, but so now we can see that this pirate has three buttons because we're in the three carbon molecules. I mean, we, we've actually labeled all three of their carbons. So the three hook arm is carbon number three, and then they all have uh, two on their belt buckles and then still the one peg leg. Um, and then we actually have the uh, OH, we have a little OH compass. And like, as the phosphates move around that OH compass moves around too. Um, so that's just something to pay attention to. We just added little extras to, to help jog your memory of the, the full molecule. Um, and of course, G3P is the only intermediate that can actually go on through the, the rest of the pathway, which leads us to step five. So this is triose phosphate isomerase, step five of glycolysis. Uh, this in this step, uh, DHAP has to get converted to G3P. So triose phosphate isomerase is the enzyme to do that. And we have another worker with an ice pack on his head, now rearranging three wires instead of six. But remember we had an isomerase that happened earlier, that worker was rearranging six wires. And now that we have uh, two molecules of G3P, uh, the rest of this actually happens twice. So even though we're only showing it once, just keep in mind that this, this happens twice for each. So the next step, is uh, done by GAP-DH and uh, it uses inorganic phosphate. That's why these P batteries are just kind of like laying around in the water, even though that would be a massive hazard. Uh, so he's taking a battery from the water and putting it into uh, the one peg leg. So now we are phosphorylating carbon one. 
Uh, and then in this process, we are producing some electron carriers. So now uh, NAD plus is converted to NADH. And as you guys probably already know that NADH ends up going to the electron transport chain to drop off those electrons. Um, and then you know, we have some hydrogen that's produced here. There's some hydrogen binoculars there in the bottom right. Uh, and of course we end up with a one three bisphosphoglycerate. So you can see this pirate has a, a battery in his peg leg and in his three hook arm. Sorry, Ben, what were you saying? Of course we end up with one three bisphosphoglycerate. Oh, yeah, like of course. How could we not? Um, if, you've, if you've watched some of our Sketchyland videos, you might be thinking, usually NADH is an energy drink and how come it's not here. But if you think about it, rum is really the energy drink for a pirate. So I mean, it's a depressant to other humans, but it's an energy drink to pirates. I think it's their only food group, right? <laughs> I think that's like the, the exam they take to get a job as a pirate. It's sort of like a personality test, right? Mm -hmm. You try different drinks and if you get the most energy out of rum, then well, there you go, that's your destiny. It's like the pirate's Myers-Briggs. It's like the maze runner or, or like, it's like, it's like divergent, <laughs> right? That's how it works. Being a pirate sounds awesome. Uh, and the posing of this guy, that matters too, right? Like we, we have him carefully drawn, correct? Yeah, I mean, it's more for the setup for the next one. So, ta-da! Yeah, look at that. <laughs> okay, so now we're we're finally into payoff. We're finally going to be making ATP. Uh, so now we have a fit a phosphoglycerate kinase. So we have another kinase, but now instead of uh, putting ATP into the reaction, we're actually taking it out. So uh, one three BPG becomes three PG uh, when the the phosphate is removed from the first carbon. So. Uh, this kid is going to place that battery in the ADP seagull to make an ATP seagull. So that's why there's a powered down seagull and a powered up seagull to remind you that this is a step we're actually producing ATP. Uh, and then uh, 3PG is uh, the uh, product of this reaction. He's in a good mood. Well, happy uh, yeah. There are pirates in better moods, but also foreshadowing. Uh, the next step is turning 3PG into 2PG. So this uh, is done by phosphoglycerate mutase. So we're just kind of rearranging stuff. Um, this kid is wearing a mutant hat to remind you of mutase. And he's going to move that P battery from this guy's three hook hand to his two belt buckle. So you can kind of see him pointing where he's planning on putting it. And then uh, then our 2PG pirate has that battery in his his two hook. And like I said, this, the, the OH compass has now moved to the, the three carbon. Yep. Yeah. I love the belt buckle. So it's, it's such a good touch. We lied a little bit before, right? Cause we said that the enzymes were all going to be workers, but then these freaking kids got into our ride. I mean, they're, like, they're doing stuff. <laughs> Are they doing good stuff though? Like that kid's turning on the seagulls. I thought those were the flying buttholes. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. I mean, you need some activated seagulls in here. And you don't know they're not getting paid. I mean, they're definitely not getting paid what they should, but. Yeah, they're just kids, whatever. This is sketchy land, yeah. <laughs> Internships. <laughs> they get the experience. <laughs> yeah, these kids are getting exposure. <laughs> uh, the next step is catalyzed by enolase. Uh, this kid is drinking a nice cool glass of enolade. And he is pouring out this pirate's water canteen because enolase takes uh, water out uh, from this reaction. So now 2PG is converted to PEP. Uh, so that is why this pirate off to the left is so damn happy. You're right. Not the happiest one earlier. But then we've yeah. got a lot here happening on oh, step the final. The very final step is converting PEP to pyruvate. So this is like the whole reason we did this because pyruvate can enter a bunch of other pathways. Um, so this is done by pyruvate kinase. And pyruvate kinase uses, uh, or it takes the phosphate from PEP and uh, combines it with ADP to produce ATP. So this is another step that we're actually getting a payoff of ATP. Um, and this is another regulatory step. So uh, this can be inhibited by ATP and acetyl-CoA. Uh, so that's why the seagull is dropping an acetyl-CoA on this kid's head. Um, serves him right, kids are jerks. And uh, he has a 1-6 fruit snack in his right hand. Uh, and that um, that's actually for F6 uh, or F16BP, which we produced earlier in the pathway. Uh, and this is actually an activator of this step. And if that's you the whole about thing. 
You talked about a real happy pirate earlier, some foreshadowing. I think we got her right here, right? That no, that was the peppy pirate. The old peppy pirate. Look at that. Look at all that pep. So much pep. I think that peppy pirate comes back elsewhere too, right? It, this Didn't might be foreshadowing. Oh, oh, I was like, this might be foreshadowing. I don't know about, but <laughs> yeah, it was. He probably He's got does. ideas for the next. He's novel. right behind you, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and what, what's the significance of the uh, of the of this child having triumphed over the animatronic and stolen his clothes? Oh yeah, great question. We wanted to like kind of show that pyruvate is is a molecule that like goes on outside of the rides. The animatronic pirates obviously don't ever get to exit the ride, but this kid can. So he's he's gonna go off on his adventures into other pathways. Uh, and I, I, I like I like the fact that he stole the outfit as the Easter egg. That's one of my. One of, one of my favorite parts of this. Yeah, like honestly, there's some red flags going off there, but. Uh, so that is glycolysis. There are a few more symbols uh, in the actual series of, this is actually two lessons uh, as we saw earlier. There's the investment phase, first half, and the payoff phase, which is the second half. There are a couple more mnemonics we introduced and things like that, but uh, we thought that just getting from step one to step 10 would be a fun way to hang out, have a little bit of a live conversation about how this goes. Uh, and I think we can move on to just general uh, Q&A, final thoughts, but Ricky, Ben, Jess, anything more about this particular lesson at the top of your mind before uh, we move on to other pieces of our program? And this was one of the, the first lessons that I ever had a hand in creating and it's still one of my favorites. Yeah, I think this was also, this was the first sketch of that we made of sketchy land, right? Yeah, yeah. I think this was this started at all. This is like why the rest of them were at sketchy land. And that yeah, was not even the theme. It was yeah, a happy that, accident. That little kid goes off and you know explores the rest of sketchy land. I think we have him later, like looking at a park map, trying to figure out where to go. And, uh, this all kind of ties back into the the broader park. It's all just so we can see merch at the gift shop, really. <laughs> Uh, well, it's also so that years from now, uh, when there is a real physical sketchy land uh, that we make, we can say it all started here, right? And just as dangerous as the, the fake one. <laughs> it better be. Oh my God, we're going to have so many lawsuits. It's going to be <laughs> uh, Okay, so um, at this point... Um, uh, I'm actually going to uh, move a little bit forward in in sequence in my little presentation here uh, because Q and A is something that I, I want you to start putting any questions you have uh, in either just the chat here in Zoom or the Q and A function in Zoom uh, at the you know in the, at, at at the bottom of the screen and then we can get through those. But there are a couple fun things that we definitely want to do, uh, which is we have a survey that we want to have and i believe Brittany is going to be putting these in the chat um and i think maybe we have a follow-up email that will get sent as well if you're watching this on youtube these links should be in the in the description that'll have these but we have a survey because we want to get your feedback about these sessions uh what we want out of this we're going to do this uh for a while we uh we've got plans to do this uh, for, for the next four weeks, we're going to do a different lesson uh, every week. Uh, in this survey is a list of questions of what we will cover next week and potentially in future weeks. So we want your input to that and any other feedback about how we could use this time uh, and basically make it something you want to come back to, uh, tell your friends about, kind of like build a group. Because today we are going to give away a subscription to Sketchy MCAT. Uh, and the more people who come to these sessions, the more of these subscriptions that we will give away. And so if you are able to, if you, if, if you tell your friends and have come along, uh, you know, raises your chances to uh, have you or one of your friends be one of those lucky people. Uh, you can register for uh, next week's session with, we got a nice uh, midly today. Week. What's that? Did anybody else hear that? I heard that something. Me? Maybe it was the peppy pirate attacking Rick. Ricky. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the peppy pirate is hiding in Ricky's Zoom background. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, either that or I was coming so loud out of somebody's uh, speakers uh, or headphones that it then came through the microphone. Uh, I have been known to do that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's my bad. Um, so, uh, so yeah, um, uh, we're going we're, we're gonna to be giving this away uh, and I want to go into Q&A. Uh, and thank you, Brittany, in the chat for reminding, we have a Discord as well. This is actually... Uh, we kind of just like floated this out there. We were like, hey, maybe we should have an official sketchy Discord. And we kind of threw it out there last week. And we've got like hundreds of people who now joined. This is uh, a place where every type of student that's using sketchy, we got medical students, we got pre-med students. Um, we have like, we're all there uh, in that Discord, uh, just talking to each other, exchanging tips, asking questions. It's really cool. And so please, uh, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't yet go ahead and join our discord, we are, you know, right now is discord.gg slash, you know, long URL. Uh, we're working on getting a vanity URL. It turns out discord.gg slash sketchy is taken by an NFT group at the moment. So I don't know, but we'll, maybe we'll have to come up with something NFTs else. NFTs everything. <laughs> God, really? I'm not kidding. We looked into it today. Oh my god! I guess we just gave them free advertising. Uh, but <laughs> we'll figure Crypto. it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, those are uh, our little pieces of business. There's a survey uh, that Brittany has in the chat where we'd love to get your feedback on the session. Uh, Join the Discord. Uh, we got a link to just do that. Jump in, make an account if you don't have one. It's real quick, real easy. Um, it's just uh, if you haven't used Discord before, it's a real casual, useful chat. It's very well behaved server. We've got you know people who have been mods of other servers there. They say this is a very well behaved server, um, and uh, very constructive work with one another there. Uh, and yeah. Uh, I'm going to manage the giveaway in a moment, but I need to do a little work to do a sort of random, um, a random generation. So, um, yeah, uh, please throw questions uh, in the chat if you've got them or uh, Ben, Ricky, Jess, I don't know if there's any other kind of reflection or things you want to share. You totally should have said if you send a message to host and panelists, you're out of the giveaway. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to choose from the giveaway for everyone attending, but you know what we, oh, I'm sorry. There's one more thing, which is what are we calling this right now? MCAT weekly webinar, right? Yeah. Don't we have like a poll about this somewhere? Yeah, we do. This one's live in the zoom. Uh, Brittany, can we bring that one up? Cause here's the thing. We want to have a cool name for this. Something catchy, something interesting, something sketchy. Uh, and so we had like a little internal poll. Our best pun writers had some suggestions of what we should name this. It turns out our best pun writers aren't that good. So we need your help. <laughs> a couple of them are pretty funny. Some of them are pretty funny. I think a couple of them are pretty funny. Someday when we do sketchy after dark, we can we can show them all the options that we <laughs> um, family friendly. Uh, yeah, so um, that that is a poll that we're going to push out as soon as uh, Zoom webinar polls always take a couple more clicks than you want them to. Is uh, is, is is what we've learned. Um, you are you are seeing us sort of present all this live. We do have a couple a uh, couple questions though. Um, we've got one from. Uh, Joshua, is there any way to more easily remember the sequence of steps? What stood out to me was the G3P and then going back in the picture sequence uh, to, the, to, to, to the worker on the DHAP. Um, so uh, I, 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 th I think what this is, one thing that might get at what you're talking about, Joshua, is how people typically use Sketchy to study. And it's more than just a single presentation. It tends to be a kind of revisiting. So uh, Jess, uh, what, uh, I think you might be well positioned to talk about, uh, how people generally use sketchy to kind of reinforce things. Yeah. So definitely check out the video if you haven't watched it. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely help you, you know, throw in some extra jokes, throw in some, some extra material there. Um, and then we also have review cards. So just kind of like we walked you through 
the step-by-step, -step, you can actually walk through uh, the review card and just practice. So keep rehearsing the information um, and then you can even take a quiz. So quiz yourself uh, on the steps. So kind of the three-part sequence, you know, definitely watch the video, do the review card, come back um, to parts that kind of don't seem to stick uh, and definitely kind of take the quiz to reinforce everything. I, mean, I just want to add in addition to all of those very helpful features, uh, in this particular sketch, we actually do have mnemonics that are on some of the signs in the back. So that is the end part of the video. We didn't go over them here, but uh, they're, they're actually pretty helpful to remember the sequence. So if you don't even remember the molecules, it at least helps you remember the names of all of them. Uh, so we have that for both the intermediates and the enzymes, the order of them. They're helpful and they're silly. I think you got to They're very that. silly. I, I think actually one other thing, Jess, you said walk through. And I think that is a super key idea here. And, and I think it's hard to understand what that means until you've actually kind of tried it. But if you watch the video, I think you'll find, hopefully you'll find, we've all found that you're able to just pull up that picture in your mind and almost literally walk around it and kind of move through the steps. And so I think that's really sort of the power of, of what we've got here is that you can, it's almost like a space that you've been before and you can, you know, just walk around it and remember, oh yeah, that was that part. Right, got it. Yeah, like it, it's even an exercise you can do right now of, we saw that image, you know, if you close your eyes and think, what, what, what was up there in the upper left-hand corner? And probably I think of some details of what was up there in the upper left-hand corner. And you know what, that that was step one. And if you remember, he's got the six hand, then you're probably like, oh yeah, we get the phosphorylation on the sixth carbon. And you remember that really creeped out enzyme worker guy because he's getting inhibited uh, with the thing on his shoulder. You can remember that he gets inhibited by the, the results there. Uh, and so that's exactly what we're taking advantage of here with this memory palace idea is that when you have a visual reference for something, you can use that part of your brain to memorize things as opposed to just the verbal, um, verbal and sort of auditory memory. Um, I like one thing I've noticed is, especially with more complicated topics, you do want to revisit the sketchy a few times, but the length of time you remember it afterwards is so much longer after that reinforcement. Um, and you're gonna remember it a week later instead of a day later. And that saves you time. You, you, you review it less uh, and so on. Um, one thing we actually, um, we've, we've noticed because we see how people use the website is people actually visit the review cards more than they visit the videos. Almost everyone watches the videos first but we see that that's actually the behavior that our students use as they go back to the review card multiple times afterwards. <clears throat> um, so we have a we have the results of the poll, uh, and I'm not actually sure if this is I, I don't know how surprising this is, but we're gonna we're gonna show this here. Uh, in our and I want to be clear, this is non-binding poll, but I would have voted for this one too. Uh, Panic and cat the disco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if you are just burning with another suggestion, by the way, of what we could name this series or name episodes of this series, please put them in the chat. We will consider them um, and credit you accordingly. Um, you know, if we use them. Uh, so uh, this is th th this gives a nice heat map. Um, I wondered whether MCAT litter, litter nuggets was going to get any. It did. I think creme de la creme cat is a, a strong alternate. Yeah, it doesn't work until you say it out loud though. Right? Yeah, that's true. It's true. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to, head back to the uh, Q and A. We've got a few more here. Um, Kaylee is asking how to sign up for next week's session. Uh, I'm actually gonna kick that one to Brittany who is up in the chat right now. Um, maybe that is a link that we need to like switch over to a new URL, or maybe it'll be live tomorrow. I will say, follow us on Instagram, hang out with us in the discord. There will be a link to sign up for next week's session. A hundred percent. Hey, um, Brittany here. Just wanted to jump on. If you registered for this event via the URL, then you'll actually be registered for all the events. So one and done, oh. but I will throw the, the link in the chat here again to, for anybody who'd like to sign up again. Great. Uh, so uh, Abby has a question as well. The animations help really well with recall. 
Are there any tips you have for working on recall if we don't have a sketchy land ride to look at? Uh, that is, uh, well, uh, I would say, I mean, I'd suggest, you know, get yourself involved in sketchy land. Um, you know, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, you can you, you come hang out with us. We are going to actually post this to YouTube. I think we're going to have this archive up so you can revisit it if you want to walk through that. Um, but uh, I can take at least a, a suggestion for this, which is that especially for topics that maybe things you want to memorize that maybe there aren't even lessons about. Maybe it's not even something from school or maybe it's a topic a topic that there aren't a lot of resources for, or if you're just trying to like remember what you're going to the store to buy in the middle of the day, uh, is uh, is you can try to use your spatial memory to think of characters and situations and locations yourself. Uh, that is, if you need to remember to buy pickles, then don't just think like the word pickles. Think of like a giant pickle jar that's like, you know, taking up your whole dining room table. Um, or if, or think about the people who are yelling at you at the Ren Fair to buy pickles all day. These are much more memorable things. Um, and any type of connection to a very memorable or humorous thing in anything in your life is just gonna stick in your brain a lot more. Uh, the sillier, the better. Abby, does that answer your question? Are you kind of asking like, when you're looking at a test question, how do you, pull up the sketchy sketch to help yourself remember. That's a great follow-up. Uh, Abby, if you want to throw that in the chat or the Q&A, we can answer a follow-up as well. Yeah, let us know what you're were, you were going for there. Uh, I think to the next couple of questions, I think actually, Adam, you kind of touched on this already. So we have the video, but we also have a review card. And so what we found both from using Sketchy and from watching our students use Sketchy uh, is that the, the review card is sort of a super popular option once you've watched the video. So kind of the, the way we think about this is you watch the video probably just once and then use the review card to kind of drill and review and remember. Um, and then occasionally you'll watch it, uh, you know, you'll go back to the video and watch it again if you need to sort of refresh on some, some of the sort of story beats or the little pieces we add that tie our symbols together. Uh, but I think the review card is a super great way to solidify the content once you've watched the video. Yeah, uh, and that was uh, the, the theme of a couple questions, which I think were actually submitted before we had answered the question earlier from Ashley and from Kaylee about like, yeah, how, how often to come back to things. Um, I also just sometimes, maybe this is the way I like to think about it, I like to think about it in terms of just days and weeks. Like you see something the first time, uh, take a look at it again in a week and open the review card and see if you can predict what the next symbol is going to say before you click it. And if you can't, then well, you get a chance to learn it uh, and then come back the next week. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot. It, it's, you can simulate a sort of spaced repetition process with it uh, as well, if that's something um, you all have heard of. We also have a question about quizzes. Uh, and essentially, are we planning to um, have a larger bank of quizzes and questions to work with? Uh, and the answer to that is, um, we talk, we've talked a lot about how we want to manage questions and quizzes within Sketchy. Uh, right now, we have one way of quizzing. But if you stick around for the future, for instance, if you all here studying for the MCAT, uh, but you're taking it later this year, or maybe when you use it in med school and what have you, we're looking to have some other quiz applications as well in the future. Uh, not, I don't have a ton of specifics, uh, but uh, feedback and questions like this are very useful in helping us guide what we want to try next, because we want to know what's going to be useful for you. All right, I am going to... Uh, take just a quick moment to finalize um, our uh, our our selection uh, of our of our winner because I think we have made it through our questions and we can hit our we can get to our giveaway. 
our winner today is, this is not a coincidence that you also submitted a question. Our winner is Kaylee. Uh, Kaylee, I don't know how to pronounce your last name perfectly, but it is Tom, Tom, Tomatich or Tomatich. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, Kaylee, you are the lucky winner. There you go. Tomatich. Yes. Uh, congratulations uh, and welcome. But those of you who are not Kaylee, we certainly hope you uh, check out Sketchy. Uh, if you haven't, head to the website and just made a free trial uh, to check out what we've got there. You really should. You should join us on the Discord. Uh, and you should come back to these. Uh, like Brittany said, you registered for one. You'll get emails about the next three of these that we're doing over the next three weeks. We'll be, we'll be doing other topics. If you want to influence what topics we are going to cover in the coming weeks, answer that survey. One of the first things Brittany posted in the chat a little bit ago. Uh, and yeah, perhaps we'll be back with a little more biochemistry or some bio or some physics or some chem. Um, and uh, probably with a new name for our series, we'll have taken all that feedback into account as well. Uh, to our hosts, any parting thoughts? Ricky, you have gained a lot of consonants since the beginning of this session. In your That's, <laughs> that, was, that was mostly Ben's doing. <laughs> Ricky actually gains about a consonant or a consonant and a half every hour, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, yeah, unfortunately, Zoom didn't actually let me put in the amount that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom has a character limit. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so uh any other final thoughts uh jess any any parting thoughts yeah no i just want to thank everyone so we love doing these so can't wait to uh come back next week yeah this has been cool we'd love to see uh we'd love to see all of you come back i think we're just going to do same bat time same bat channel um as long as that phrase isn't trademarked uh for some new content and like we said tell your friends bring them along and we'll give away some more courses. Thanks so much, everyone, and have a great evening slash late afternoon, depending on your time zone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thanks,